StealthWatch Cloud is a security analytics tool that provides visibility, threat identification, and compliance. It works seamlessly across AWS, GCP, Azure, and even your private LAN. In this video, we're going to go over the configuration of integrating StealthWatch Cloud with your AWS instance. After we're done configuring, StealthWatch Cloud will be able to read the AWS VPC flow logs that contain all the network flow metadata. StealthWatch Cloud then uses these VPC logs to perform entity modeling, which essentially uses machine learning to create models or simulations for every network entity. It determines what role that entity is based on its behavior. Say if something is acting like an Active Directory domain controller, it automatically detects that and assigns it to that role and looks for any changes. Based on observations, StealthWatch Cloud can see if there are sudden changes in behavior or anomalous behavior in how that entity is acting and how it's being accessed. It can determine if that entity is violating the organizational policies, which includes what port use or resource profile characteristics it's using. It can also predict host behavior based on past activities. So all around, StealthWatch Cloud is a powerful behavioral analytics tool. To start this video out, I'm in my StealthWatch Cloud dashboard. I'm going to click on the cloud on the top right hand area and choose sensors. Then I'm going to click on the Integrations tab. Actually, one thing I just realized I brain farted on. We can actually jump right into the Integrations tab from the dashboard by clicking on the gear on the top right hand corner. My bad for not showing that to you when I went here. In the Integrations tab, I'm already under the AWS configuration. This tab actually provides really good instructions on the StealthWatch side, but if you want to have a little bit more instruction, there's a link for support documentation. And this will take you over to the AWS Quick Start Guide in the event you want to use that. That being said, I'm still going to walk through this configuration to show you how it's done, or if you're new to AWS in general, this will be a nice walkthrough. I have an AWS instance spun up that's part of the free tier to test today. Let's start by going over to my AWS instance. I'm currently in the IAM dashboard. I'm going to go to Services on top and type in VPC to navigate to my VPC configurations. If you don't know what VPC is, think of it as a virtual network in the cloud. It stands for Virtual Private Cloud and it allows you to launch your AWS resources into a defined virtual network. Once under VPCs, I'm going to click on Your VPCs on the left hand side. I can create more VPCs here to separate instances, but currently I only have the default VPC, and that's what I'm going to use for this video. Clicking on Actions on top, I'm going to choose Create Flow Log to configure flow logging for this VPC. For the filter, we can choose one of two choices for StealthWatch Cloud. Either Accept or All. Accept means that we'll log any connection that was accepted and not rejected. If we choose all, we get logs of everything, including accepted and rejected connections. I'm going to choose all because I want to give StealthWatch Cloud the most data that I can. The destination for these logs will be an S3 bucket that StealthWatch Cloud will pull from. We have to provide the S3 bucket ARN for that specific S3 bucket. ARN stands for Amazon Resource Name, and it's a name that uniquely identifies an AWS resource. You can get the ARN from the S3 bucket by navigating to Services and then S3 if you don't have it currently. I already have it copied, so I'm going to just paste it in here. For the log record format, we're going to choose Custom. We can go over to the AWS Quick Start Guide and copy the exact format from that document. Then I'm going to paste it in here, press Enter, and click Create to finish creating this flow log. Now that that's completed, I'm going to click on Services and then IAM to return to our IAM dashboard. Next, we're going to create a policy that has permissions that allow StealthWatch Cloud to access the flow log data. I'll navigate to Policies on the left-hand side and create a new policy. Next, I'll click on the JSON tab. StealthWatch Cloud has made it really easy for us to copy the policies. Swinging back to my StealthWatch Cloud console, I'm going to copy the policy document here and paste it right into the AWS policy. Then I'll click Review Policy. For the name, I'm just going to copy the policy name as it's displayed in the StealthWatch Cloud console. The name will be Observable Policy. For the optional description, I'll just put Policy to allow StealthWatch Cloud to read events and log data. And then I'll finish creating the policy. 
After creating the policy, I'll need to create an IAM role that will grant StealthWatch Cloud permission to access the flow log data. To do so, I'll click on Roles on the left-hand side. Then I'll click Create Role. The type of trusted entity is going to be another AWS account. To find the account ID, we're going to navigate back to the StealthWatch Cloud dashboard and grab the account ID under the directions. Then I'll just paste it here. For the options, we're going to require an external ID. The external ID is going to be the first part of our StealthWatch Cloud personalized URL. We can see it in the browser URL of our StealthWatch console, or we can pull it off of the instructions. In my case, it's Cisco Cat Mac. I'm going to copy this and paste it back into the role that I'm creating. Then I'll click Next to go to Permissions. I'm going to filter the policies to find the one that I just created, the observable policy. I'm going to choose that one and click Next. Then I'm going to click Next again. And I'm going to set the role name as Observable Role, as is the example in my StealthWatch Cloud console. Then I'll click Create Role to finish creating this role. Next, I'm going to configure StealthWatch Cloud to ingest flow data stored in the S3 bucket. To do so, I'll click on the role that I just created and copy the role ARN before I proceed. Then I'm going to go back to the StealthWatch Cloud console and click on the Credentials tab, where I'll paste the ARN of the role here. I'm going to give it a name, which I'll call it AWS Role. Then I'll click the plus sign next to it to add these credentials. Next, I'm going to want to configure the S3 bucket policy to allow StealthWatch Cloud to ingest flow log data. Let's click on the VPC Flow Logs tab, and then choose S3. I need to get the name of my S3 bucket and paste it in here, so I'm going to go back to my AWS console. Then I'm going to click on Services, and then choose S3 from the left-hand side. I'm just going to copy the name of my S3 bucket, which is SWC Cat McNamara 3 Logs, and then swing back to the StealthWatch Cloud console to paste it there. From the drop-down, I'm going to choose the credentials that I created earlier in the other tab. Before I click the plus button, I'm going to copy this JSON policy and then swing back to my AWS dashboard. Then I'll go to Services and back to the IAM dashboard. And once again, I'll click Policies on the left-hand side. And then I'll click Create Policy to create a new policy. Once again, I'll choose a JSON tab, and I'll paste the JSON policy into it. I'm going to click Review Policy now. I'm going to name this policy SW3 S3 Policy, and then click Create Policy. Next, I'll assign the policy to the role I previously created by clicking Role on the left-hand side. And then I'll click on the Observable Role Name to edit it. I'm going to click on the Attach Policies button and then filter the policies by name to pull up the new policy I just created. Then I'll attach this policy to this role. After I've done that, I'm going to swing back to the StealthWatch Cloud console and click on the plus sign next to my S3 path and credentials to add it. If there are no errors, I'm going to swing back to the Sensors tab and I should see AWS under my Sensor list. If it's in green, that means it's working correctly. After this integration is complete, I should be able to click on Dashboards and see a new dashboard for AWS visualizations. And with that, that wraps up this video on integrating StealthWatch Cloud with AWS.